Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, it, this feast actually comprises three di separate, um, three different manifestations of our Lord's divinity uh, in the Gospel. Uh, the first is um, his is the incarnation uh, and his nativity, which we, we hear about today through the perspective of uh, the Magi. Um, uh, then the second is the baptism of our Lord in the Jordan. And the third is the uh, manif his manifestation at, through the miracle of the wedding feast at Cana. Uh, I got the three mixed up yesterday, so you might want to fact check me. I switched one of them that I think was wrong, but you might want to check. Um, but today's gospel focuses on the first one, uh, the nativity of our Lord, and specifically, um, as uh, perhaps we could say, through the, through the lens of the Magi, the experience of the Magi coming uh, to uh, worship the newborn king of the Jews. And um, we did, in fact, in this, gospel, in this translation we, uh, of Matthew, it uses the word Magi. We also uh, know them as three kings or three wise men. And so I looked it up yesterday to see which, which, it actually, which is it. What does Magi mean, kings or wise men? And it turns out that it's neither. Um, that in fact, uh, the Magi were, um, they were Persians and they were members of a priestly caste in ancient Persia. And so technically, at least according on the surface, according to the meaning of the word itself, they were neither kings uh, nor wise men, although uh, perhaps uh, perhaps they were, in a certain sense, nobles, and there was perhaps a kingly status 
and perhaps they were wise, but at least according, at least on the surface, according to the meaning of the word, they were, um, they were members of a priestly caste and not kings uh, or wise men. But we see, um, but we see in fact, uh, through the gospel today, we see that beneath all of that, they show, they show themselves, uh, we could say perhaps to be both kings and wise men. Uh, they are, they uh, reveal their wisdom by following, though they were, though they were pagan priests, and they didn't know the true God. Uh, they, through the, through following uh, sincere hearts, seeking the truth uh, with sincerity, they follow what they knew uh, to be pointing to the King of Kings, and they find him, and uh, and they do they do him homage. They and not only that, but they do him homage when they see on the surface that he is a, a mere child, that there is nothing necessarily about him that uh, that. Uh, points to uh, sovereignty or kingship, much less divinity, uh, but nevertheless they trust and believe and know who it is whom they are seeking, and when they see the child they prostrate themselves and worship him. And, uh, and so in this way they, they show themselves truly to be wise, wiser even than the wisdom that they were, fo- the worldly wisdom they are following in order to get them there is this wisdom of bowing before uh, God made man before them, though they couldn't understand uh, with their minds, um, they uh, nevertheless bow before him, um, and they also, also in this way, they they show themselves perhaps to be kings, like uh, like all those whom Christ calls to follow him are to be kings. Kings not in this not in the way that Herod is a king, that Christ uh, in John's gospel uh, says that the Son of Man has come uh, not to be served but to serve. And when he demonstrates this through the washing of the disciples' feet, he says, uh, do you see what I have done? So you also must do. And this is what is to reign for the Christian because this is the way in which God himself reigns as king, that Christ is the true king, and yet his king is not one of uh, domination and uh, the dominating of others uh, through sheer force, but rather through the service of love. We see that this is contrasted with the way in which Herod is king. That Herod, um, his kingship is something that he has, is a power that he has grasped at. In a sense, it's a manifestation of original sin in which we uh, treat equality with God something to be grasped at, which is the opposite of what St. Paul says Christ does. That Herod is grasping at power and grasping at a power which can belong only to one, only to him. And so when he hears in any way that his power is threatened uh, by these wise men from the east, as it were, then he becomes troubled. And when, one, when a king like this becomes troubled, all who are under his rule become troubled with him. And we see this is what happens uh, with Jerusalem. Whereas Christ is, as the king of peace, the only true peace, because it is a lasting one, uh, that those who, are, who submit to his rule uh, know that the peace uh, that no worldly tribulation or trial um, can disrupt. This is the contrast. And this is also the choice that we have set before us, which king we are to serve. Herod, perhaps, we could say, could, as uh, another manifestation of the selfish, selfish grasping that comes from sin and original sin, uh, could also represent our own uh, tendency towards egoism, towards seeking to place ourselves at the center or above others in one way or another. Uh, we have that path that we could follow or we have the path that Christ lays out before us, the path of, of the cross. If the cross is the throne from which Christ, the king who is um, a mere infant in the gospel today, ends up ro- reigning from. And it is through this cross, uh, the throne of his cross, that he destroys sin and death and uh, gives us the hope of salvation to also reign with him in heaven, uh, those who reign through serving out of love. And so today as we prepare ourselves to receive Christ's precious body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, uh, let us ask him uh, for the grace to desire to uh, embrace with trust and with love the the yoke of his cross, the submitting of ourselves to to his yoke, that we would uh, have a, a greater desire to allow him to convert our hearts away from the false kind of kingship that Herod represents, and more towards uh, the reign of Christ, 
the reign of Christ, which um, breaks down and destroys our selfish egoism and allows God to rule. And, the more, and through this ruling of God, we would know the freedom of the sons and daughters of the Father.